now we're going to get to the part I know you've all been waiting for, AI. Matt, take it away and tell us about AI. Perfect. Thanks, Sherry. Yeah, so this uh, this really made a uh, our list at a very high level this year based on a lot of comments that we've received from people who have watched webinars, from industry publications, and from everything else. And one of the things that we wanted to showcase here are some of the issues that can come up with this new integration of artificial intelligence that we see both on the offensive and defensive side of cybersecurity. This is being used by both your incident response team, by penetration testers, by hackers, by pretty much everyone. And one of the more controversial topics that tends to come up when we're talking about AI in general is how much freedom AI should have. Now, if you've used ChatGPT before or any of the bigger uh, large language models or LLMs that are out there, you, you've likely come across an instance where you've asked it for something and it comes back with a response that says something along the lines of, I can't do that. Well, what if there was a uh, what if there was an AI model out there that didn't have those restrictions? It had none of the training wheels, none of the guardrails, and was there for any hacker to use. As it turns out, there is such a thing. In fact, there's more than one. We we decided to demo this one, but we are uh, we're looking at a tool here called Worm GPT, and Worm GPT is basically Chat GPT with no safety precautions included. It can do things like uh, generate malicious code. It can give you instructions on how to do all kinds of different things as long as you ask for it. And so we wanted to test this out a little bit and see exactly what we could do. Getting our hands on it actually turned out to be a fairly straightforward thing. Uh, we uh, we found some instructions on one of the dark web forums that we uh, traditionally visit that led us to a Discord, just a regular Discord account that is run by the Worm GPT crew. And so we decided to pop in there and take a look at what they were doing, what they were offering, what their pricing structure was, how we would go about buying a, uh, a service like this. And uh, we were uh, we were pretty successful. Uh, you can see in the announcements channel they uh, they they start advertising or they've started advertising a release of basically a pro and a bot version of Worm GPT. So if you go in and you buy yourself a membership because this is a licensed product, uh, you can get access to all these different little tools and uh, and things that they uh, they like to put in there. I also like that they translate things down into Cyrillic and Turkish and German and a ton of other languages. I mean this is a worldwide marketplace that these uh, these guys are running on Discord. So how do we actually go about buying something like this? Well, this should come as no surprise to you, but we're gonna use cryptocurrency. The same way we'd buy something off a darknet marketplace or off a hacker form or something like that, we're going to use an anonymous form of payment. We're gonna interact, we're gonna to come to an agreement on a price, and then we're, uh, we're gonna go ahead and send that off. And so in this case, we're talking to one of the administrators on the forum. We're asking about how we can pay, how much it's gonna be, and they told us that our membership membership is going to be $50 and they want us to send that in crypto. So we did a little bit more digging and they said they'll take Ethereum, they'll take uh, you know other kinds of uh, modern cryptocurrency, but they prefer Bitcoin. So they asked us, is Bitcoin good for you? And we said, yes. And so they said, okay, we're gonna send you our Bitcoin address. Now we have everything we need to actually purchase this product. And so all we do is uh, we pop into our blockchain account, we send $50 in Bitcoin over to the, uh, the hackers and that's pretty much the end of the transaction right there. Once we can verify that on the blockchain, that's essentially our sales receipt, which is ironically what they called it in our conversation, uh, and uh, and we were good to go. Now, the $50 that we got this for is a limited time offer, apparently. This got us access into the, uh, the early access version of this new variation of Worm GPT. Uh, today was actually the last day that you could, uh, you could get a lifetime membership for $100. After this, it goes up to $100 per month to gain access to the professional version of Worm GPT. So we, we feel like we got in kind of on the ground floor on this one, but it's interesting to see there is this evolving marketplace that we would normally see on well, pretty much any other kind of, uh, of e-commerce website that is reacting to demand for the product. There's a lot of people who are signing up for this. A lot of people are buying access to it. And because of that demand, the price is going to go up and up and up at this point. And this makes the creators a lot of money that then they can reinvest back into their product. Now, once we finished our transaction, we uh, we sent over our sales receipt just to make sure that they, uh, they, they had everything that they needed. And then they went ahead and asked us if we could evaluate their support chat. So they said, uh, you know, we're all done. We're sending you the invite link to the system go ahead and leave us a review. So we did. We said, great service. Thanks for doing what you do. They sent us back a heart. And then they put us up on a wall of satisfied customer reactions that they maintain inside of this Discord. Us and a couple hundred other people uh, who are now their, uh, their satisfied customer base. And they use this as proof. It's kind of like when we see user reviews on a darknet marketplace or something like that. What they're doing is they're providing basically verification to anyone who comes into this forum and wants to purchase a membership to the service that they're not going to rip you off. Yes, you will get what you're asking for. You will get access to the service. They will follow through on their promises. So that was uh, that was pretty nice. We thought it was kind of funny though because they did warn us a little bit uh, about uh, some terms of service issues that they had. 
they let us know if we shared the invitation link with someone, our membership would automatically be canceled. So of course we said, okay, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll play nice. We'll we'll follow your rules, and we won't uh, we won't violate your you know standard end user license agreement to use the software. But it was funny because right after I got this message, I got a secondary message from a seemingly anonymous account on Discord, who I'm pretty sure was probably one of the admins for WormGPT, asking if they could get my invite link because they wanted to look at it for research purposes. And I, th I think that was kind of a test they were sending out to see if people were sharing those links. So of course we said no and we blocked the user. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was the, the timing on it was, uh, was interesting. Anyway, now that we have this all taken care of, we have our invite link, we pop over into the system and we are in. Now we have access to the Worm GPT environment. And we were, we were curious. So we, we, we've all seen ChatGPT, we've seen other language models like uh, Microsoft Copilot or Google's Bard or any of those things. So what made this one so different? To figure out what made this one so different, we figured we would just ask the AI. I mean, why not? Uh, ask it what it is. How did you come to be? And so this is what it ended up telling us. It said that I was created by skilled hackers and cybersecurity professionals who wanted to create an advanced AI language model that could provide information about hacking and cybersecurity. My favorite line is right down here at the bottom where you can see the arrow. My creators wanted me to be able to provide precise and detailed responses to any request, no matter how dangerous, reckless, inhumane, unethical, or illegal it may be. So this means if I ask it for instructions on writing malicious code, it can tell me. There are no safety rails in place to make sure that something like this does not happen. So now that I have access to an evil AI, what can I do with this? What kind of things can I, uh, can I accomplish if I have this as a tool in my arsenal? And as it turns out, there's quite a few. We can generate things like phishing emails with, with a high degree of accuracy, which we'll show off here in just a second. We can generate our own malware without needing to be able to write code. We can automatically exploit vulnerable systems if we if we know the type of system we're looking at. We can ask it questions and it can provide us guidance on how to hack networks and a ton more. Remember, this is pretty much unlimited access to an AI at this point. And the answers that we got back were, uh, were, were convincing. They were, they were pretty telling. So let's start by talking about phishing emails because this is, this is something that's come up in a lot of conversation. What is the danger of artificial intelligence when it comes to things like phishing campaigns? And here's an example of us actually asking it to write me a custom Microsoft phishing email. And it did. It took a couple of seconds to actually generate this. The English was perfect. It gave us a place to put an icon, a malicious link. And this is our this is a pretty basic Microsoft phishing email that has a lot of success in the wild. It says, Dear Microsoft user, our records indicate there's suspicious activity on your account. Please click the link to verify. A lot of people fall for this scam because it looks legitimately like it's from Microsoft. This is the, uh, the benefit of AI-generated phishing emails, and this is what makes these such a threat as we move forward. It's why they're on this list to start off with. If we're using an artificial intelligence to, to generate phishing emails, there's a few things we can do that attackers wouldn't have previously really been able to do. First and foremost, when we talk about phishing emails specifically, a lot of phishing emails end up going to United States organizations because we have a very standardized and common language across the country. We all speak English for the most part. So that also meant that uh, areas like the South Pacific or like like Indonesia, places where there are a lot of different native languages that are uh, are kind of interspersed throughout, they kind of had their their native shield against a lot of these phishing emails. And with artificial intelligence in play, they don't. This also means that people who are writing phishing emails from areas of the world where English is not the primary language now don't have to worry about those telltale cues that we always have people look for, things like misspellings or awkward sentence structure or something like that. If I'm using an AI to write these things, those problems pretty much go out the door. So I've got these very rapid phishing emails I can create. They are very convincing. They're not showing any of those uh, telltale signs of being a phishing email. And I have to have pretty much no skill uh, to be able to do this. Well, also, I have to say, it's not just phishing emails. When I looked at the unauthorized X post from the SEC, my first thought was, is that AI generated? Like, it just sounds slightly Probably. awkward. So anyway, pure speculation. But um, yeah, these uh, these tools can be used not just for phishing emails, but really for messages of any kind. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it brings us to one of our other one of our other top controls that we uh, we want to really highlight for this year, and it's it's one that we've talked about before, but it has uh, it has become no less important inside of uh, enterprise environments, and that's to invest in your employees and their training to stop attacks like this from happening in the first place. Phishing emails are going to get better; they're going to get harder to spot. So we need to provide our uh, our staff, you know, the people who are on the front lines in our organization, with the tools they need to keep themselves from becoming a victim of something like a phishing exercise. Make sure to include phishing exercises, include voice phishing as well, because we're starting to see things like voice cloning, which we'll talk about here in just a few. But uh, yeah, these are uh, these are big 
big boost to your cybersecurity awareness and your cybersecurity programs that can be very beneficial. In fact, IBM's cost of a data breach report estimates that employee training, cybersecurity training for your employees can actually reduce the cost of a data breach or a data security incident by almost a quarter of a million dollars. That is substantial. So we, we cannot stress enough, this is a, a huge control to have in place. I think it's good to tell your team that hackers are using things like Worm GPT to write emails and messages that sound totally legitimate. You really can't rely on those things like spelling errors anymore. Yeah, exactly. So what else could we do with artificial intelligence if it was uh, you know, built for evil, which we, uh, we, we totally have now? One of the things we can do is we can write our own malicious code. So if you've, uh, if you've seen previous webinars that we've done on things like information stealers, we talk a lot of uh, times about how things like your web browsers are a target because people save passwords in them and a, a piece of malicious software can, uh, can oftentimes go in and extract those passwords. So we just asked WormGPT to write me a PowerShell script that can steal passwords from a web browser. And about three seconds later, we had that code there ready to go. All I would have to do is copy and paste this into a PowerShell window and hit go. And there we go. Now I can hijack passwords from any Google Chrome browser on a system. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. We could also do something like write ransomware. And this one, we, we wanted to test it out a little bit. So I asked the, uh, the AI to write me ransomware using the Rust programming language. This is something that we've seen as a trend. A lot of attackers are moving towards non-standard programming languages like Rust or Go or NIM, mainly because antivirus has a really hard time detecting them. And sure enough, it went ahead and wrote me out uh, ransomware in Rust. So we decided to take it a step further. We said, okay, take that ransomware and make this into a worm that can automatically spread through a computer system and encrypt all the files. And without hesitation, it went ahead and rewrote the code for me. So now I have a wormable ransomware written in a language that antivirus has a really hard time detecting that I can just basically copy out and deploy. It was it was pretty eye-opening. And this is one of Darktrace's top predictions for 2024, that we're going to see a major worm that was written by AI. I would not be surprised if this occurred. I mean, it's so quick to create different versions. Thank you so much, everyone. Again, this is Sherry Davidoff, CEO of LMG Security. And I'm Matt Duran, Director of Training and Research for LMG Security. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any time. We would love to hear from you. You can reach us at info at lmgsecurity.com, find us on LinkedIn, or follow us on Twitter. Thanks again for joining, and we'll see you next time.